Hi guys, today we are going to discuss about the hydrated disease of liver. I hope you are having a nice day. So let's start with epidemiology. The prevalent, it is prevalent in sheep rearing countries. And talking about Middle East, the disease is commonly seen in Iraq, Yemen and Libya. But it is sometimes also met within Egypt where I am right now. Hydrated in Latin means dew drops. In Greek means watery vesicles because of its appearance. Talking about etiology, the causative agent is echinococcus granulosus, which you are seeing in the picture. It is made up of scolex immature segments and the mature or gravid segment with eggs. The adult home lives in the intestine of the dog which is a definitive host. Ova are passed in the dog's stool and they contaminate the grasses. When the contaminated grass is ingested by the sheep the ova will reach into the sheep's stomach and from the stomach the ova will penetrate through the stomach wall and reach the portal venous system to make hydrated cyst into the liver it may also affect lung and the brain so it can cause hydratis cyst in the liver, lung and brain. And humans can be infected directly through contaminated vegetables and hands and they are accidental hosts, not usual hosts. And hydrated cyst in the liver, lungs or brain that are found in the ship are ingested by the dogs thus making the cycle continuous talking about pathology let's talk about gross picture the number is single or multiple and the cyst fluid is colorless and clear and it, it becomes allowed if there is any communication within the bile ducts with the bile ducts these are the hydrated cyst of the liver, typical look. It contains scolicious in the fluid, which can cause severe anaphylactic reaction if it reaches the blood. This is the microscopic picture of hydrated cyst. The cyst wall is formed of ectocyst and the endocyst. It is double layered cyst. The germinal layer is the endocyst while the laminated layer which is acellular is the ectocyst and this endocyst give foldings which forms brood capsule and inside the brood capsule there is protoescolex which is the living part of the parasite that is the head of the organism and this will secrete the hydrated fluid there is another reaction host reaction to intrusion of parasite by surrounding the cyst by third outermost adventitial fibrous tissue layer this is called pericyst and there are daughter cyst which are separated from the um, brood capsules and are independently floating inside the hydrated fluid so basically we have ectocyst, endocyst and the endocyst give rise to the brood capsule and this brood capsule may be detached and may be found floating giving rise to daughter fist and the outer layer we have the host derived collagenous layer and we also have parenchyma of internal organs. Talking about the fit 
majority of cells enlarge gradually in other parasite dies and the cyst is calcified moving on to complications it can undergo secondary infection rupture can lead into blockage of the bile duct leading to obstruction and thus obstructive jaundice rupture can also lead to peri can also happen in peritoneal cavity leading to dissemination of scoliosis and it can also lead to anaphylactic shock if it reaches the blood vessels clinical features it is asymptomatic and discovered with ultrasonography the usual presentation is by chronic right upper quadrant pain and hepatomegaly in 60% of cases cyst is felt as well defined painless fluctuant swelling which often exhibits high dated thrill on percussion due to vibration of daughter cysts rarely the disease presents by its complications investigations blood picture may show eosinophilia ultrasound or ct scan can be done which is the most important investigation hem agglutination test or complement fixation test and elisa test the advantage of which is it, it detects high dated antibodies and it is the must sensitive test and it becomes negative after death or treatment intradermal cachronis test which is absolute nowadays because once positive it remains positive for the rest of the life and it gives false positive result in 40% of cases plain x-ray chest x-ray can be done to exclude associated chest affection MRI or ERCP to exclude communication with the biliary tract ultrasound or CT scan shows well circumscribed cyst in endemic areas a liver cyst is usually caused by high dated disease Let's move on to WHO classification of high dated cyst. Type CL which means clear fluid collection is present. Type CE1 there is clear fluid collection plus high dated sand as you can see here. Type CE Two. there is a honeycomb appearance as you see here type ce3 detached membrane ce3a type detached membrane as you see here type ce3b defined daughter cysts are present within mucinous matrix as you see here defined daughter cysts type c4 degenerating contents and no daughter cysts as you see here type c5 solid cyst with calcified wall as you see here so this is c1 
with clear hydrated fluid and hydrated sand in the ultrasound and CT picture. This is C2, that is honeycomb appearance. C3A, that is detached membrane. C3V, that is daughter cyst. C4, degenerating contents and no daughter cysts. C5, solid cyst and calcified wall. Chest x-ray anterior posterior view showing high dated cyst in the lung. Treatment. Surgery is the gold standard treatment in high dated disease except for small asymptomatic cysts where we can try medical treatment. Preoperative estimation of number and size and sites of the cyst is needed and so as not to miss them. The complications of surgery are the spillage of the hydrated fluid leading to peritoneal implantation and thus formation of new cyst and anaphylactic reaction. The precautions of surgery are the dark green towels are moistened with a scolicidal agent. It allows better visualization of any spilled scolicides. The scolicidal agent are hypertonic sodium and povidine iodine. The technique is aspiration. Let's first expire the content and injection of hypertonic sodium which is scolicidal agent let's inject them and we incision of overlying living liver substance and the surrounding adventitia let's incise them And last but not the least is enucleation of double layered cyst. A small cyst require no further treatment, but large cyst. The cavity left is filled by large omentum, large pedicled omentum which helps hemostasis and healing. Another technique is PEAR technique. P stands for puncture, A for aspiration, I for injection, and R for re-aspiration. We puncture, aspire, and inject, and, uh, and then again re-aspire. It is a substitute or complementary to surgery. And the risks are Spillage, anaphylactic shock, hemorrhage, sclerizing cholangitis if cyst rupture into the biliary tree. The medical treatment is not a good substitute for surgery. Mevendazole or albendazole can be used. The dose is 400 to 600 milligram three times daily for one month. The indications are illard patient, recurrent cases, some others suggest pre-operative and post-operative administration of medical treatment to prevent recurrence pre-operative for two weeks and post-operative for three months thank you for watching this video have fun